Welcome to Helicopter Training Videos. In this video, we're going to finish up looking at the ACS helicopter changes by looking at the CFI or Flight Instructor ACS. Now, if this is the first time you've looked at these videos, I highly recommend you go first watch the general ACS changes video we did. It covers the history, the goals, the new task structure and coding system, the required elements, the ACS document organization, including what they did with the special emphasis areas, new technologies and updated references, additional rating tables, etc., and some tips for students. So go check that out. In this video, we're going to cover the two new instrument tasks in the CFI. Yep, this is the CFI, not the CFII, but there are instrument tasks here. The air taxi altitude changes, the auto 300 foot AGL rollout, flight deck management task changes, the big changes to the FAY section, as well as the technical subject section and the performance maneuvers tasks, teaching risk management, commercial standards in the CFI ACS, the common errors, and many new elements in many tasks, as well as the task rename reorder and more information. Again, this is just though the really big differences. We're not going to go line by line through the ACS. That's something you need to do in preparation, but let's just uh, get into uh, the big changes. So first of all, this is probably one of the biggest changes in all of the four new ACS. It's also in the commercial ACS, where it is a required task. Here, it's an optional task. But we're now talking about doing hood work or simulated instrument work in the helicopter for your CFI ride, potentially. This particular task involves maintaining straight level flight within 200 feet, heading within 20 and airspeeds within 10 knots, and then making constant airspeed climbs and descents with straight and level as well as turns to the same standards. As well as all that, you're talking through and teaching this and talking about the uh, common errors and how to fix them. In the changes to the commercial ACS, we talked about this where it's a required item. We talked about how for many operators, this could be a problem because uh, a lot of people are doing their commercial and their CFI check ride in an R22 helicopter. And many of those are not installed with attitude indicators. To do these tasks, the aircraft has to be fully set up to be able to do uh, IFR type training, the same as what many people would use in R44 to do. So it would need a attitude indicator, a stabilized compass of some sort, as well as a turn coordinator. So that uh, has become a painful upgrade for many operators. I think it's a good thing though. I think having attitude indicators in aircraft that may be used, especially for night training and may potentially, you know, and find themselves in inadvertent IMC, I think that's uh, going to increase safety across the fleet. The next task that's new under the kind of instrument tasks under the emergency operations area of operations is recovery from unusual flight attitudes. If you've done your instrument training, this is, uh, this is pretty straightforward. Of course, the difference is here, you're teaching it. You'll also be teaching this in your CFII if you do flight instructor with instrument at some point. There's also a reference to Appendix 3, which is talking about uh, making sure essentially that we don't do anything silly like a, a pushover or, or heavy aft cyclic and overspeed the rotor system. Now for the air taxi altitude change. For the old CFI PTS, it was referring to the commercial PTS for the standards, although it didn't have the numbers in the PTS or in the CFI PTS. The old numbers were plus or minus five feet. The new commercial ACS changed that to plus or minus 10 feet, and the new CFI ACS now includes the commercial standards in the actual ACS, so that's why you see the plus or minus 10 now instead of plus or minus five. Also, we have the uh, auto rotation rollout requirement. This is the same in private and commercial as well. This has been added in to make sure that rollouts are complete no lower than 300 feet above the ground when doing auto rotations with turns. This is obviously going to increase safety. Uh, it means that altitudes for entry are also probably going to be higher. But in my opinion, it makes the whole maneuver a little bit easier. You have more time to make adjustments to hit your spot. Also references here, Appendix 2 and 3, and here it's talking about a minimum entry altitude would be at least 700 feet, and then talks about, hey, if this rollout isn't complete by 300 feet, the evaluator will direct the applicant to perform a power recovery, a go around, and the task will be considered unsat. So there's no squeezing it in, finishing the turn below 300, but we need to get these aircraft rolled out wings level by 300 feet. Also the same as the changes in the private and commercial is this new flight deck management task. It, it essentially replaces any kind of um, 
single pilot resource management task. The content itself is not too much different between SRM tasks, but what is different is, particularly for the CFI, of course, is that you have to teach this stuff and you have to know the common errors. But the big difference to the flight deck management is that Appendix 2 Safety Flight says that if you fail a uh, ADM, aeronautical decision-making, or SRM, single resource management, CRM, crew resource management, on any other task, that task will fail. But also, you get a bonus fail, the flight deck management task will also be a fail. This is, as I said, in private and commercial as well, um, strangely not in instrument for some reason. When we look at the changes to the fundamentals of instruction, there's a lot going on, a lot of changes in this area. We're going to look at all the areas of operations and how their task titles and orders have changed. We're going to look at that later. But here, let's look at the FOI, or Fundamentals of Instruction, Area Operation 1. You can see there's a lot of renamed tasks. The learning process remains the same name. It's just been changed order there. Human behavior becomes the effects of human behavior and communication on the learning process. The teaching process and teaching methods have been combined into Task C, Course Development, Lesson Plans, and classroom training techniques. Critique and evaluation becomes student evaluation, assessment and testing. Fly instructor characteristics and responsibilities becomes elements of effective teaching in a professional environment. And then planning instruction activity also gets combined into that task C, course development, lesson plans, and classroom training techniques. We also have a new task, which is task F, elements of effective teaching that include risk management and accident prevention. You can see here there's a lot going on with that that you'd have to uh, make sure you're aware of and able to teach through and explain. Also, you can see the required tasks have changed. We'll look at those in a bit more detail in the next few slides. On the whole, helicopter PTS, you're required to do at least task E, critique and evaluation, and task F, CFI characteristics and responsibilities. In the new ACS, we have different required tasks. The task E is now elements of effective teaching in a professional environment and task S, F is elements of effective teaching that include risk management and accident prevention which is a new task as we already talked about plus at least one other task. So now you need to do at least three tasks under the FOI area of operation. In the technical subject areas you can see there's quite a lot of changes going on here. Some name changes, area medical factors, becomes human factors. The use of distractions during flight trainings have been removed. Those distractions are now spread throughout different uh, tasks as risk management elements. And they added a new runway incursion avoidance task. Helicopter flight controls was reduced down to just flight controls. And we also have a new operation of systems task that was actually moved from the area of operations three pre-flight preparation. And then you can see helicopter weight and balance was merged into performance and limitations, which is a new task. Navigation and flight planning was moved into navigation and cross-country flight planning. Another new task is navigation systems and radar services with a whole new bunch of knowledge, risk management, and skill elements. Now operations, same name, but now put at the end of the list. Regulations and publications was renamed 14 CFR and publications. National airspace was moved up. Logbook entries and certificate endorsements moved down and renamed endorsements and logbook entries. Airworthiness requirements were moved from this area of operation into the pre-flight preparation area of operation. And also the required tasks have changed. In the PTS, it used to be task L plus one other. Now it's task L and task C and at least one other. So you now have three, at least three tasks in this area of operation. In the performance maneuvers area of operation, we have rapid deceleration, it's now rapid deceleration slash quick stop. Straight in order rotation and 180 order rotation, now adding the in a single engine helicopter to the title, as well as renaming the 180 order to be order rotation with turns. What that basically means is uh, you can do multiple turns to complete the maneuver, so it doesn't have to be one continuous 180 degree turn. And the required tasks have changed. In the old PTS, it was just selecting one, at least one maneuver, A, B, or C. Now, in the ACS, it's task A, rapid deceleration, and at least one other. So now you have at least two tasks in this area of operation, and one of them will definitely be rapid decel. The other is going to be some sort of auto rotation.
Risk management elements are new to all the ACS. All the ACS have a risk management section for every task. Now they usually, in all the other private commercial instrument, they usually start with the words, the applicant is able to identify, assess, and mitigate risks associated with, and then it will give you a list of, of risk elements. Of course, being the CFI rating, you're now going to have to teach one, one or more of those elements in each task. So the wording now is, the applicant explains and teaches how to identify and manage risks associated with. So this is a change because in the past you, A, didn't have these risk elements identified and B, didn't have to actually teach them. But now you're going to have to make sure you know these risk elements well enough to be able to teach any of them. As we already kind of talked about, the old PTS for the CFI, you had to go look up the commercial PTS to understand what the standards were that you were supposed to be demonstrating and teaching to. Now those standards in the ACS are incorporated into the actual CFI ACS, so you don't have to go back to the commercial ACS to look those numbers up. So this is uh, an interesting one. In the PTS, you had a list of common errors. It would say, exhibits instructional knowledge of common errors related to power failure at altitude by describing, and then it would give you, in this case, quite a long list of possible common errors that you would talk about. Under the ACS, you're still going to have those common errors to have to analyze and correct as well as discuss and ex describe and explain, but it doesn't give you that list anymore. It just says common errors related to the task. So I would say, I would normally say, throw that PTS away. This is the one PTS I would keep. Keep the CFI PTS and use the common errors lists that it has to help you build your study guide for your CFI under the ACS standards. Now all the new ACS have new elements in all tasks, but the CFI ACS in particular seems to have a lot more. I'll show you an example here. Let's have a look at Hover Taxi. Here you can see under the old PTS there were five instructional elements before we then get into common errors. Under the ACS, for the same maneuver, we have nine knowledge items, many completely new, eight risk elements, all new, and 13 skill elements, mostly the same, but with more detail from the PTS. Now, at, we know at a minimum, you only get asked one knowledge and one risk element and all of the skills, but you have to know all of those knowledge and risk elements because you don't know which one's gonna be picked on or which ones are gonna be picked on by the evaluator. So like I keep saying, but especially for the CFI ACS, read every line of this book in preparation for your check ride and make sure you have the knowledge to answer and to teach for a lot of these, all of these elements. The last section of this video, we're gonna go over the other areas of operations that have had changes to their tasks. We're just looking at titles and orders and what's new tasks or what's been removed. We're not gonna go into each task in detail. That's gonna be something that you're gonna to have to do. And like I said, go line by line through those. But here we can see in area of operation three, pre-flight preparation, Certificates and documents were split into pilot qualifications and airworthiness requirements. That's the same as private and commercial. They split these the, that certificate and documents task into two separate pieces. Weather information task is still there, but it's obviously been updated for new weather products and the use of EFBs and in-flight weather avionics. Uh, operational systems and performance limitations got moved into the technical subjects area of operation. Pre-flight lesson on a maneuver to be performed in flight. No changes there. Area of Operation 5, pre-flight procedures. Minor title changes here. You can see single pilot resource management became flight deck management, which we, we already talked about that change. And engine starting and rotor engagement became power plant starting and rotor engagement. The changes here under airport and heliport operations, they made some changes to the order. They did the same in the private and commercial too under this section. And some minor changes to the titles. One thing you can see though is they added runway lighting systems. And that's your runway entrance lights or rails and your takeoff hold lights, THLs. So those might be new to you. Make sure you read up on those and understand how, how those are, would be taught. Under hovering maneuvers, area of operation seven, you can see there was a minor change to the title from surface taxi to taxiing wheel type landing gear, just to make sure that we weren't confused and trying to slide the helicopter along on the skids and then they changed the orders somewhat. Under area of operation eight, takeoff, landings, and go-arounds, again, you can see there's some minor changes to the order. 
They also took the word crosswind out of the takeoff and just left it as normal takeoff, not normal and crosswind takeoff, which is strange because they left crosswind in the approach task. Uh, and also crosswind is still a component of that normal takeoff and climb task. The other thing they did is they made clarification that we shouldn't do rolling takeoffs unless we have wheel type landing gear. And the last change here is they took out the approach and landing with simulated power plant failure, multi-engine helicopter, and moved that into the emergency operations area of operation 11. Under area of operation nine, fundamentals of flight, no changes. We skipped over area of operation 10 performance maneuvers because we've already covered that. Now we're looking at the emergency operations, area operation 11. You can see some total changes there. The power failure at hover and altitude, they added the clarification that's in a single engine helicopter. Setting with power, now labeled as vortex ring state. I'm not going to open the can of worms about that right now. Low RPM, basically the same thing, but it was spelling out what RPM means. The same with low G, explaining what G means in low G, gravity. You can also see new tasks there in green. The approach and landing with one engine in operative that came from every operation we were just looking at has been moved into here. And then those other two instrument related tasks, D and E, we've already covered those. Under the special operations, area of operation number 12, very minor change to the title here. They took out the word platform in the pinnacle operations, which is strange because platform is still part of the elements of that task. And in area of operation 13, post-flight procedures, they added the word parking to the title of task A for after landing and securing. That's not a new part that was already in the PTS in terms of having to consider parking areas and downwash, etc. You can see there a little excerpt from the PTS. All right, so that's just the big changes. Like I said, you really need to get into these ACS. You should have a copy just like you would have for the old PTS. You should have a copy and be going through this before your check ride. Make sure you go through every line. Now, as I said in other videos on the ACS, this is also preparation for your knowledge test as well. It's like a one-stop shop for knowledge. Uh, test and check ride prep. Here I've got some more information for you. If you want to, you can go to the full ACS helicopter update playlist, as well as the general helicopter ACS video I was talking about. I've also got links in the description here for you to go buy these paper copies. If you do that, there are Amazon affiliate links. It costs nothing extra to you, but it helps support helicopter train videos. And again, if you find anything, something that we've missed, something that's worth mentioning, please let us know in the comments. For more videos on the Helicopter ACS, check out our full Helicopter ACS playlist. For other Helicopter Train videos, check out our Helicopter Maneuvers Guide. Or perhaps you want to follow along with a student in the cockpit from day one to check ride with our full flight lesson series. And if you haven't already, please click subscribe to get all the latest videos and help promote the channel. And finally, for more information on Helicopter Train videos, including articles, resources, quizzes and more, and learn how you can support this volunteer project, check out our website, helicoptertrainvideos.com. Thanks for watching.